Okay, I'm going to be like uh, Pluto and post-commentate something slightly difficult that I did. <clears throat> that being, um... Hold up, it's... Way too far cropped. There we go. Um, yeah. I'm doing a Greedstone plus Badgestone run. Didn't stream it because most of it's just trial and error with bosses and such. It's not really that much interesting. But I'm gonna make videos and or stream the actual hard stuff, of which I deem Crystal King 1 to be the first... the first real one. Oh, I just realized my text is off... off slightly. Anyway, so... <clears throat> um, obviously, I'm not gonna use... I'm not using Life Shrooms or any of the skill issue badges, I say, but badges that make dodging easier, no power bounce clones, that sort of thing. I'm still not doing those, even despite badge stone plus greed stone. Um, and uh, I actually, I found a way to do this bat boss without, uh, without any, uh, items, actually. So, uh, I've got a video here. I'll actually skip to the end, where I show off my badges. Uh, so yeah, Flame Smash, obvious. Quick Change, obvious. Defense Spotter, just because why not. Uh, the Happy and Crazy Heart, really good in this challenge. That gives you uh, a full heal every second turn, obviously. And I added on uh, the... I mean, Crazy Flower is also not bad either. I added on uh, those, so I gained four, uh, or five FP every second turn, too. As well as on the next page, you've got to have some FP pluses. Uh, and a bunch of FP saving badges because FP economy, that that's what this fight was all about. It was all about FP economy. Optimizing my FP for uh, a lot of things because there's my defensive badges. I put on every defensive badge I could because, and I just barely was able to survive. Because uh, yeah, I also I have Flower Shield. Now I don't have Stellar Shield because Stellar Shield is Garbo. Uh... Because it it only it only it's only one third damage reduction when you're at max SP, so like one hit, and then the rest will do a little bit more. And it's <clears throat> yeah. So I needed the flat. I needed as much damage reduction as possible with Flower Shield, and even then I barely survived some of the attacks. So yeah, we start with just flame smashing. Uh, Paracarry is going to attack one of the crystal bits because I will not currently survive three crystal bits, so we need to get rid of one of them. Paracarry also gives me some FP. We're going to do some speed up, get some good blocking in. You'll see, you'll notice the, during that first turn there was a bit of lag. That's just because I loaded a save state to retry the battle over and over again. Uh, this does not actually fix the RNG. <clears throat> I should point this out later on when he does good old Three King Monty. Uh, I, I did not know which one was which beforehand. So I had to, I, but, but more on that later. But the point is, RNG was not fixed. This was, or rigged, so this was just to make it simpler. Anyway, we're going to Flame Smash again, and we're going to set up a water block. <clears throat> when he summons three bits and attacks, uh, I'm going to need to have both a water block and a cloud nine on in order to survive all three bits. So we start with a water block because it's cheaper, and then we're going to go put on the cloud nine, and then we're going to have to put on another water block because the first one will run out. But this is our only free turn to put up the water block. That's why we have to do it so early. <clears throat> now, uh, you may be wondering why don't you just attack and do out of sight and all that stuff. Um, I could. Problem is, if I do too much damage, like if I just attack on the first turn or like multi bounce or whatever, it's like it doesn't quite work with the strategy. And also, I don't actually have time to put up the water block and the um and the uh, cloud nine. Uh, I run out of time, actually. I get him too low. I think the threshold's around 120 HP. And he's, like, at 128. So if I do too much damage, like, if I fire shelled on this turn, he would, uh, absolutely, uh, summon and fire his bits in the same turn. Now, there, I purposely missed the last one just to be like, yo, I don't need the last one. I made my, uh, water blocks and cloud nines exactly as long as they needed to be. But here we're just having a repeat of the first turn. <clears throat> Except now we have a water block. Now it's not going to reduce the damage yet. We need both the water block and the cloud nine. Now I could have put on defense focus, but it requires a... Mario's damage is better than my partner's. Better than Cooper's, so... I needed Mario to do the damage. And here we're going to set up the 
Cloud9. And now uh, Crystal King is low enough, so he's going to immediately summon the bits and then fire them. And there goes my dishwasher in the background. Excellent. Bonk, bonk, bonk. And here on this turn, I spent a while figuring out what to do. And I almost did the wrong thing there. Uh, but I have to refresh. I just, I need my HP back. And I don't get it back from recover. So we're, we're, we do abuse refresh a, a bit. But anyway, now we get some uh, damage in with Cooper. He's going to do his uh, single blizzard attack now. And next, I spent a bit trying to figure out where I am on the script. I wrote the entire script down. Exactly what to do on every turn. Here, we just we need to water block. Don't know why I did it first, but... Here, I only did three. I might only need two turns. I don't know. Uh, I'll get. We'll get to that in a few moments. But yeah, we're just going to do some more damage. And now he's getting low to the point where uh, he's no longer going to be doing the bits. I mean, well, this is the last bits, but he's he's now low enough after this, so he's not going to do this attack again, so I don't actually need the Water Block or the Cloud Nine anymore. Refresh again, because uh, we need HP and FP. Get some damage in with Cooper. And he's gonna do, uh... He's gonna do Blizzard Attack, and then he's gonna do the Ice Bolt. And the Ice Bolt is the attack... Okay, yeah, we get the Double Block obviously, and I'm not, I'm not sure if I need the ice, or the water block in order to survive the ice bolt. I live, I, I, if, if I block, I take four damage, as you're about to see here. I don't know if the water block matters. Cloud9 would be nice, but I don't have the, uh, I don't have the FP for that, and that also drains six FP, so I'm really low here, so we need to uh, refresh again. And then fire shell. And we uh, actually uh, now here's interesting. I can opt to not refresh. Uh, I can opt to instead do a hammer, a full power hammer that'll do three damage, and then do six damage instead of eight with my fire shell, purposely uh, rig it, and then it gets me one extra damage. But then I don't have the refresh, and I need the FP. Now in a previous version of my sh strat, like if the script it would have worked. I was using items, so I'd like use a cupasta instead of a refresh a few turns ago. And that one damage actually didn't matter, because in one of my test attempts, I almost beat him, but I got Mario got frozen like on the last turn, and he had 8 HP, and if I had done that one extra damage, he would have had 7, and he could have died to a Mega Bolt. But, no dice. So that one damage does actually matter in certain variations, but I just didn't have room to go with it, so... we Instead, we just opt for the Refresh and the Fire Shell. And we're perfectly safe here, he's just going to split, but not attack. If his HP hits 50, he'll go into the air and he'll attack, I think. Or maybe he'll just divide and attack. I don't know, but the point is I had to keep him above 50 HP here. Now we fire shell, and we're going to flame hammer, flame smash. And this is the part where we just kind of wail at him, and he doesn't really do much about it. It's <laughs> so like that turn he didn't attack. This turn he's going to heal. I'm going to heal. He's going to heal. It's like, it's five turns, of which he only attacks one of them in, so it's a, a really good break. This is the only turn he attacks here. It's gonna be a single blizzard, though. And of course, I knew what attack he would do on which turn. Because that's based on his HP. He's gonna heal again after this. I was getting a bit nervous by this point, because... This is my pretty much best run of this script. I mean, it didn't actually take me that long, but it took a bit of practice. And uh, now we just kind of do that again. Flame Smash, Fire Shell. <clears throat> and here's where he starts using his, uh, what I call Three King Monty. Again, though, because he's uh, his HP is high enough, he's I don't know what the th threshold here is. It might be above 55, or it might still be above 50, I don't know. But he's going to Divide and Conquer. And you see there, let's rewind it a bit so you can see, look closely at the center king. As soon as I saw that animation, I knew it was the center one. Yeah, he's not going to attack that turn, but yeah, let's look at it again. 
Because nobody seems to know how to dodge this attack. Okay, pause right here. So, like, see how his coat is above his coat? And the first guy's coat is above this guy's coat? Look at the layering. So, this guy is in between this guy and this guy. So, th this one's the real one. Basically, you can just look at the sprite layering. It it's hard to see in a still image, but l look closely as he's splitting, and you'll see it. Let's see if I can get a... Yeah, it's really apparent here. It's like you can see the outline. This guy's full. This guy's got his left half below this guy, and this guy's. Like you see the sprite layering. There's four different patterns. So there's a uh, left, middle, right. In which case, the middle one is uh, the right. Like in terms of top to bottom. Uh, there's the sprite layer where the middle one is on top of both of them. So you can't tell which one's uh, front or back or so. <clears throat> like which one's middle, which one's far right, because the front, the middle one is at the top. So, but you just have to memorize that you go, you hit the left one in that case. Then there's the one where the middle one is at the far back. If the middle one's uh, the last one, uh, you'll you, you'll be able to see it later on because we actually get that pattern later on. Uh, but it's the far right one. Now there is a fourth pattern that's really rare that goes. Uh, it's the inverse of this one, where it goes. Uh, the far left one is at the bottom, is at the back. The middle one is in the middle, and the far right one is on top. And that's the only exception. And that, for that pattern, you want to hit the far right one, if I recall correctly. I haven't, it, it's a very rare pattern, though. The other three are about equal chance, the, but that fourth pattern is, like, a, very, very uncommon. And as far as I know, those are the only four uh, patterns there. But that tells you which, uh, which one is the real one. The other two are fake. And it also tells you the timing, because the timing for his attack actually depends on which, uh, which one is real. So he, he only actually gets a chance to do this attack once. But yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to electroshock the middle one. Now I could mega bolt here, but I'd opt to uh, electro dash rather in order to uh, save some FP for later, just in case I get frozen later on. I'd rather have FP to use out of sight and such because FP economy gets a bit tight if I use mega bolt on that turn. I'm gonna use instead mega bolt on a later turn. And he just got knocked down, so he can't use the same attack twice in a row, so he's got to do that instead. Now here we do our last refresh, because uh, I need I need my uh, HP. I could refresh last turn, but then I wouldn't have the HP on this turn. So getting the HP is what's important there. And then we fire shell, get some more damage in. And here we're going to have a split pattern, and it's going to be the one on the far right. And the far right means it's the it's extremely late time. Basically, far left is early timing, middle is kind of late-ish timing, and the far right is very, very late timing on the block. The timing is different. I wasn't very practiced with this, so I'm really, really glad I got this. So notice how the blizzard pretty much fully vanished by the time before I had to block. If it was like for the far left one, I would have to block before it ended, before the animation finished. It's quite different. So now we're opting for the uh, Electroshock, or sorry, the Mega Bolt on the far right one. And again, I knew it was the far right one because I saw the animation. I did not know in advance that it would be the far right one. I just knew based on the animation. Flame Smash, and at this point I just need to block one more standing blizzard. The Happy Heart gives me the HP I need to survive. Now here's... Now, now if I miss that, uh, that some of these last few blocks... Like, this is why I wanted to save a little bit of FP. Uh, now here I just opt for Fire Shell just in case I screw up the Electro Dash. I didn't want to take chances. Fire Shell was, was guaranteed to kill. But even at like the lowest, pretty much. And yeah, anyway, that's it. So yeah. And yeah, I, 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 I did have some items. Like I did have some Coup Pasta and a Shroom Cakes. Nothing OP, just a few like healing HP and FP healing items just in case I needed them, and just in case I missed some cru crucial blocks late later on and had to out of sight, and I might have been able to survive, but I didn't want to use that, and I didn't end up having to, so there we have it. Um, next, next video, this will probably be some even harder bosses, who knows?